Good morning, everyone. Isn't it a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, we've got a pretty full schedule today, but there is one order of business that I have to do, and I just want, I want him to stand up, and let's welcome Pastor Nate. His first Sunday with us for a long time. Yes, we are so happy that uh, he received a call from God and answered that call, and here we are today. Um, also, I have a few announcements. The first one is you have a piece of, uh, oh, some of you have found it, yay. Oh, a lot of you have, yay. It's a name tag, so just kind of work on the two ends are strips that you can get off easily. And be sure and put it on. I'll put mine on. I don't think he knows me yet. <laughs> but I'll make sure. I'll make sure. Yeah, so the name tag. Also, we want to uh, know that you have been here today with us. And so if you'd be willing, uh, we'd love for you to fill out our uh, Connect card to register your attendance here today. And if you have any concerns or would like some uh, connection with the church, there are options down there for you to fill out, and a, a place on the back to record prayer requests or other requests that you might have or concerns, okay? And then uh, you can put that in, your, in the offering plate later on in the service. The other thing I want to mention to you, there are several announcements in the bulletin, and I know you can read those. There's a special one in the... Um, insert, and it's on regarding the floods in Nebraska. The American Baptist Men Disaster Relief have uh, requested that the churches put together at least five of these flood buckets to help. And I saw where Council Grove did 15. I saw that this morning on my um, American Baptist feed. But they're requesting that we put together at least five of these flood buckets. And so the list there um, of the things that are included in the buckets, and uh, if you would be willing to put a bucket together or a class put one together or just bring a few of the items here to the church office, we'll put one together. And, uh, but I think that's important for us to help our uh, fellow people who are in trouble. Also, in our own state, the, the waters around Atchison are looking pretty scary. So let's just keep all these people in our prayer and see what we can do to help. Um, right now, I'm excited to introduce our handbell choir. Have them come on up and open our time of worship with When the Saints.
Thank you. Let's all stand now and join our hearts in song, singing Glorify Your Name, number 10. You may be seated. This morning, we're going to take some time early on to pray. Many of us know there is power in prayer. And there's even more power in prayer when more pray. And so there are a couple of prayer requests to bring attention to the church. One is that Don Gasper, he's having some heart concerns and would like for us to keep him in your prayers. And I was made known this morning that Julie Cook's father is back in the hospital and is not doing very well at this moment. But for those of you who need to know more of who to pray for, please contact the church office for we have a list of so many that are in need of prayer. Will you please pray with me, and we will follow with the Lord's Prayer. God of the earth and sea, God of the forest and mountains, God of our heart and souls, be with this church, be with the world church, and be with those who are not in the church. We come before you with the needs of others in our hearts. We come before you with our own personal needs. We ask for your healing presence to be made known to those who are sick in our congregation. We ask for your comforting and peaceful presence to be made known to those who are grieving. We ask for your friendly presence to be made known to those who are lonely. We pray for the flood victims of several states in our nation. We pray for the victims of violence in our nation and around the world. We pray for the leadership of our country and the world's countries that they make wise decisions to better humanity and to bring healing to those who hurt. And we continue our prayer as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May I have the children come and join me up front for our story time. And I know we got a bunch. There was a bunch in faith for us this morning. Here they come. I'm telling you, y'all, it is a blessing to be working with these children. And they're so clever, and they're so smart, and I absolutely love it. Y'all can make a circle to face me, unless you really want to watch yourself up, up, up there on that screen. Yeah, I know. It's pretty amazing and cool, isn't it? So I have a story for you, and it's a story about me. See, almost 20 years ago, I went on a mission trip to China. And let me tell you, I was scared to death for many reasons. The first one is I never flew in an airplane, and I'm scared of heights. That's number one. Number two, I had never been out of the South. Ever. I've been to Texas and to Alabama, I've been to Florida, Louisiana where I grew up, Mississippi, and Arkansas, and that was it. And I was hopping on a plane to go outside of the country. So I was scared. The third thing is, is that I had nobody with me that I knew. I was going overseas on a mission trip to meet a whole bunch of strangers, and then we were going to travel throughout parts of China to see about bringing the good news of Jesus to the people. So I was scared, right? I emphasized that I was scared, right? Okay. Well, I was in this place called Kunming, and we were staying at a university because we were studying about a people group that we were targeting. And I had been in China for about a week at this point. And I had a nightmare that night. And I mean, this nightmare was so powerful that I dreamed that my dad was screaming in my dream. And I woke up out of the dream only to discover that there was somebody outside screaming. And it terrified me. And I had somebody sleeping in the room with me. But I didn't want to wake him up. And so I'm lying in bed, crying, and incredibly afraid. And then I felt Jesus say, pray. So I started praying. I started praying for myself, for what we were doing. But I also told God about my fear and how scared I was. And next thing I knew, I felt Jesus' love just come over me, and it felt like Jesus was giving me a big old hug as I laid there trembling. And soon after that, my fear went away because I knew I had Jesus with me. And Jesus' love took away my fear. And that's one of the things that Jesus' love can do for all of us. And that's something that Pastor Nate's going to be preaching about, how love conquers fear. You just got to allow God's love to come in and to take away that fear. Let us pray. Dear God, we just thank you so much for these children and their inquisitive minds. May you continue to let their minds grow and that their questions grow and that their bodies grow. And may you be with all of the adults in this congregation that we help our children to learn and grow. Amen. Hey, y'all go back to your parents.
<laughs> that, was, that was good. And now if the ushers would come forward to receive this morning's offering. Join me in prayer. God, today we give You thanks for all that You do. This service is not about us. This time is not about our time. But this time that we have together with our friends and family is a time that we can bring glory and honor to Your name through everything that happens here this morning. And we ask, O Lord, that You would be with everything that happens, that You would continue to place Your Spirit into the places that it needs to be so that we understand the plan in which You have for our lives. And as we receive this morning's offering, may You bless the gift as well as the giver. May You help this church to understand its mission even that much fuller so that these dollars are used for the spreading of the good news of Jesus throughout this community and all around this earth. We give you praise. We give you thanks. It's in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's power and praise. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us as we sing. My 
sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal so lay down your burden the grace there's rest for the weary rest that endures earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure so 
Our scripture lesson today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. May God ask his blessings and understandings to his words today. Death is not easy to talk about, but what if we've been looking at it all wrong, right? Like a butterfly can't live until the caterpillar dies in the cocoon. Death is a conversion. Well, because of Easter, because of Jesus, death is no longer an ending for us. It's a transition to greater life. Jesus died so that we can live. This is love. It helps if I turn on my mic. Let's try it again. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, a couple of things first. I wanted to introduce you to my best friend this week. It has helped me out immensely, and it's called our church directory. <laughs> I have carried this directory around everywhere I have gone. 
Some of you just may not have seen it. And if I answered the phone, I was probably, instead of Facebook flipping, I was flipping through the directory to see what you look like. All right? So that's my best friend this week. I thank you as uh, some of your names I do remember and know, and others I am just learning, so I'm grateful for your patience. I'm also very thankful for your willingness to fill out the name tag so I can go, hi, and know your name. Here's a couple of things I want, to, I want to talk about before we get started in the sermon series. One thing has been very evident to me this week, and I mean this wholeheartedly. You as a church and your staff have done an incredible job during the interim time. So what I would like to do here to just sort of celebrate that, for all that you have done as a church to, to step up in extra ways, also, your staff and the fantastic job that they have done, and even Bob Racer, Pastor Bob, who's probably worshiping at Westside Baptist this morning. So I want us to just be loud enough to where Pastor Bob can even hear us, because I think that he would really like that. And I just want us to give each of us a round of applause for the wonderful work that you have done during this time. Thank you. There's a couple of things about me in terms of a preacher that you need to know, and I want, I want to just kind of go over these really quick so that we uh, can start this journey together well. First thing is this, I want you to just be who you are in worship. I think oftentimes in church we feel like we have to come in and we need to be someone that we aren't throughout the week, but I want you to just feel what you feel because that's just who we are, and in church and worship we shouldn't have to be any different or put on, put on a facade that we we think we need to have just to act okay around everyone else. So I want you to feel who, and, and be who you are. And also the sermons that are preached in this pulpit should live longer than Sunday morning. So I am completely open to dialogue. In fact, I welcome it. Um, I want you to dialogue about the sermon with me throughout the week. And you know, there are going to be times where we're going to agree and we're going to celebrate and there are going to be other times where we may not agree on something. And you know what? That's very Baptist, and it's okay. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm also going to ask something of you. Every week, I want you to just pray for our church. Pray for the worship. Pray for the planning. Pray for me as I preach or whoever's speaking that week. I want you just to, to be in prayer. As you'll see in the, the, the newsletter for March um, or, or April, whichever one that is, I talk about prayer because prayer is the essential foundation of us moving forward together. Two more. I want you to check the facts. I don't want you just to believe what's on the screen or what I say behind this pulpit. You may have a, a paper copy of the Bible or you may have a tablet that you use or a cell phone. All I ask is if you're using Facebook, you at least check in so people know you're here. But I want you to check the facts. Make sure what I'm telling you is actually in the Scriptures. And the, the last thing is this. In your bulletin each week, I'm going to try to have questions for further reflection. Those can be done on an individual basis. Those can be done in a small group or in a family or with a friend. But I want you to utilize those as we go forward together. So enough about that. So this sermon series is about Love. This is love. I had someone who so nicely asked me this this week, Nate, are we spending five weeks talking about love? Kind of. But here's the big idea of the sermon series, is that I think sometimes as we go through Lent and we, we head into Holy Week and we go to, to Easter Sunday, it's sort of kind of this same thing. We talk about the resurrection, and pastors try a million different ra ways to kind of phrase that. But what I want us to understand is that the, the whole Lent season, or Holy Week, or Resurrection Sunday is all about how Jesus transforms us from the inside out. And so the five weeks, we're going to talk about how Christ's love transforms us in that particular way, and how we can have life, and we can have life more abundantly. So today we talk about fear, and I want us to just be very honest with ourselves. And I'm going to start out with a question. If you want to write it down, you can. If you want to think about it, that's fine too. What are you afraid of? 
What are you afraid of? Some people are afraid of spiders, heights. My wife is afraid of slime. Oh, she's in here. I probably should not have said that. And Plato. Cats are another one. Razors and many other different things. And there are a lot of different big words that kind of explain these types of things and they often end with obia. Statistically, around 11% of the U.S. population has some sort of a phobia over their lifetime. So how then do we tell a phobia from just a general fear? A fear can be defined in this word, danger, or awareness. But a phobia is actually defined as a fear. Some people may not like spiders crawling on their arms, but it doesn't cripple you from going outside in the dark. That's kind of the difference. I want us to take a look up at the screen. This is a photo from 1937. You can see that the outfits are a little different, the way that the picture is taken is a little bit different, even the, the clarity and the, the resolution is not as good as our cameras today. I want us to go ahead and flip to the next slide. This is a modern day family photo. Have you been to a place lately and how many people take selfies, right? So it's, it's different in the way that pictures are being taken. You also see that the clothes, the style, a lot has changed. But one thing that remains the same is that all of us in this room, and this is what I love about Scripture, all of us in this room have fear of something. All we have to do is really be honest with ourselves. Now this guy named Napoleon Hill in 1937 authored a book and basically talked about several different categories that fear falls in. So let's take a look at that. And these are in order of uh, most likely to least likely. Poverty, criticism, poor health, loss of love or loss of love of someone, old age, or death. Now Napoleon believed that all fears can be put in or divided into one of these categories up here. So I want to go ahead and look at the next slide. These are clay pots, uh, you know, similar to what in terms of the New Testament uh, pottery would have been. I want you to take a look at these just for a minute. If you look at these, there is absolutely nothing special about them. They're kind of plain. They're not very pretty. They've got tons of cracks. And actually in that first one right there, there's, there's a hole. Um, they're, they're not perfectly sized. And if you look in our text this morning, it's very similar to this. The Apostle Paul talks about a vessel. And what he's describing in terms a term of a vessel is you and me. That we are imperfect and we're cracked and we're, we're not always just this immaculate looking piece in our lives and everything is okay, but instead it just always isn't. There are things that we struggle with. I talked to many of you this morning and you have struggled with something this past week. That's similar to what the Apostle Paul is talking about with these clay pots. But if you remember in the Scripture, the Apostle Paul says that there is a treasure that lies inside of the vessels. What does that mean? These pots in the New Testament were used to hide treasures, things that were, were really of value. Most of these pots had lids of some sort, and they, people kept precious things within them. So why does that matter? It mattered because things that were kept in here were protected. So even though it was cracked, even though that there were holes, even though that they were imperfectly shaped, people still decided that they were durable enough to keep the most precious things that they owned inside. I want you to go back to the Scriptures with me, and I want to take a look as we, as we kind of talk about what our lives mean in terms of, of this. Look at verse 8. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. 
This is a representation of one of those clay pots, and inside is just a replica copy of the Dead Sea Scrolls, or one of them. And it's not pretty, it's not perfect, but I tell you what, if you squeeze on it and you try to break it, it just doesn't happen. Do you ever feel like that in your life at times? That sometimes you feel squeezed or cracked or broken, and that the world is trying to press you and, and to see what sort of reaction happens. But no matter how much pressing, no matter how much cracking, no matter all the different influences that happen within your life, yet you still keep going. We didn't read verse 12, but I want to read this to you. It's kind of like Paul Harvey's The Rest of the Story. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Is life really at work in you? Do you feel like you have that life that Jesus talks about, that life that is more abundant? That life that is just sweeter? Do you wake up in the morning just praising God and thanking God for everything that happens? Or do you go, another day, another struggle, another time? I want to tell a personal story. As you know, many of you have met little Ty as our son. He just turned four, March 3rd. And as we were going through the adoption process with Ty there was this moment where I received this call. I was at my parents' house, and I got a call from his foster mom. And when I answered the phone, she was just crying hysterically. And I thought, oh no, something's wrong. Ty at this time had not moved into our house. We had done several different visits with Ty, and in fact, we had already just a couple of days before talked with Shamanique about what do you think about us adopting Ty and bringing him into our family, and everything was supposed to be a sealed deal. And there's a lot that kind of goes before and a lot that goes after, but that phone call, once Ty's foster mom, her name's Sue, once Sue kind of was able to, to get, get it together a little bit, she said, I just heard from Ty's worker, and someone else is already adopting Ty. And at that moment, my heart was crushed. I feared that loss of love because we had gotten attached to that uh, little boy. It made me ask for a moment, God, what are you doing? Where are you at? Because I felt like God wanted us to adopt Ty. And at that time, I was afraid. Have you ever felt like that before? Where your heart has crushed, your vessel is broken, and you're asking God, why? There are two things I want to talk about here this morning. There's a problem with fear, and there's a freedom from fear. So here's the problem, and if you're in your bulletin, you can kind of follow along on these. But here's the major issues. Fear spreads. Have you ever been at that place like where you're at a camp and and maybe you're in a camp with some kids and you're around the campfire and you're roasting marshmallows and one kid happens to tell a scary story. And then the other kid tells a scary story and then it goes on and on and on until finally no one goes to sleep that night, right? Fear spreads. And often when we're afraid, we're running to our friends, we're running to our family, we're running everywhere else talking to whoever will listen, even social media at times. And our fear often makes others very fearful themselves. Fear makes us miserable. Every one of us has a unique way of that we deal with fear, but I can tell you this, that it makes us miserable. Sometimes it's sleepless nights. So oftentimes it's crankiness, no cosette, not me. Headaches, increased sickness, trouble concentrating, do any of those sound familiar to you? Fear makes us miserable. It can cripple everything that we do. Fear is also very paralyzing. Have you ever been at that spot where you just don't want to wake up? You sort of just want to throw the covers back over and go to sleep and hope that whatever the issue that you're dealing with, 
just sort of goes away. I've been there. Are you ever fearful enough that you can't seem to just concentrate on, on anything? Do you feel like one more thing that happens in your life is just going to cause ruin to you? I think all of us can relate to this. Fear also causes us to do really strange and unusual things. When we talk about fight or flight, fear often has this reaction where we just want to go do this or do that and try to make this better or that better and we're going here and there and we're wearing ourselves out. So that's sort of that flight stage or we have that, uh, or with that uh, fight stage, we have this f- uh, flight part, portion where we sort of just back away and we don't want to do anything. We don't want to go anywhere. We don't want to be around anyone. And we struggle. But what if there's a third way? We sort of have flight, we have fight, but what if there's a middle freeze? What if at the moments that you were the most fearful in your life for situations or for things, that you just stopped? And you truly prayed to God, and you truly sought after God to help you with whatever you were facing in your life? It sounds like a real easy solution, doesn't it? We think, well, what if we just stopped for a moment? Because oftentimes when we're concerned or worried or fearful or we have a high level of anxiety, we are just running around like crazy. But what if we just stopped? What if we just paused? What if we just prayed? What if we just truly sought after God? How could that change us? So here's the second. There is truly freedom from fear. And here's some things I want you to consider as you wrote down the answer to that question at the very beginning. What are you afraid of? And I'm not talking about spiders or slime or Play-Doh or those sorts of things. But what in your life, situationally, are you worried about? What are you fearful of? Here's a couple of things that can help us in that moment of pause. Self-evaluation. Why do you really fear that? If I go back and think about my situation with Ty and how I felt at that moment, how I was questioning God and what God was doing, even though I know that God is almighty, all-knowing, I know why I was afraid. So we ask this questions of why do you fear? What is the source of the fear in which you have? I think the second thing is that we have to accept ourselves. It's okay to feel in those moments. It's okay to not be sure. It's okay to ask God questions. And I think in in terms of accepting ourselves, there may be some things that we just cannot change. Our inability may be someone else's ability. And their ability may be vice versa. And we realize that each of us have been gifted to do God's work in unique and wonderful ways. And we know that through Scripture that God meets us exactly where we are at in our lives. We don't have to be that different. Instead, God says, I'll meet you right where you are. Third, we should dedicate ourselves. In that moment of pause, we need to make sure that our faith is increased, that we are believing that God can move mountains if God wants to move mountains, knowing that God's timing is the greatest timing and that God's will is the greatest will. But what if we had faith that could move mountains? What if we found God's purpose in everything that happened? What if instead of wanting to cry a river, we truly looked at what God is doing in terms of our lives with blessings? And here's the last. Freedom from from fear allows us to just take life one day at a time. And I'll back away from that. Maybe for us, in this particular moment of time, maybe it's moment by moment, or minute by minute, or hour by hour, day by day. Most things that paralyze us with fear never happen. Today is the tomorrow that we get worried about yesterday. Did you hear that? Today is the tomorrow that we get worried about yesterday. We are at that place. I've often 
heard this expression, Nate, don't get the cart before the horse. Has anyone heard that? Yeah, I see some hands. Sometimes we can worry and be fearful about things that are going to be days, weeks, months, or years ahead. And oftentimes we spend time being fearful about those things, and a lot of times they may not even happen. So let's not get the cart before the horse. But let's take it one day at a time. And in those situations of pause, we can truly self-evaluate. We can accept who we are. We can dedicate ourselves back to God and what God wants. And we can take it one day at a time. Friends, our faith needs to be bigger than our fears. It does. Do you fear the past? Do you fear something that's going to happen in the coming days, weeks, or months? Or maybe you're fearful of something that is happening right here today. And maybe here in this place you have brought fear and worry and anxiety. Life is too short to live in these moments. Oftentimes when we lose a loved one, we're reminded of how short life is. Or maybe if you're a parent and you watch your kids grow up, you think, man, they grow up way too fast. Life is short. And life is fast. And life is too short to live in those moments of fear and worry, depression, anxiety. I can guarantee you that there is no amount of money, no insurance policy so great, no support system so wonderful that will take away every one of the fears that you have. God is the only One who can take away those fears. Today, there is no better day to give our lives over to God again. To give those fears, those struggles that we have to the person in Scripture who is the great physician, the mighty counselor, the refuge, our strength, and even our friend. As we get ready to go into this time of invitation, what I want you to do is to think about putting your hand in God's hand. And I think when we do, we realize that all the promises in Scripture are true. That God is who God is. That God is still on the throne. And that God cares so deeply about you. This is love. That Jesus made a choice so long ago to go to the cross to die for our sins to be resurrected on the third day so that we could have victory over death and life everlasting. This is love. Jesus did not die a death. Jesus did not rise again so that we can live our lives in fear. Friends, God wants us to live our lives victoriously. We have the promise of abundant life through Christ. We have the promise of victory over death and life everlasting. All we have to do is put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. And I think that when we do, we realize as the days go by that our fears will be replaced with faith. And we will begin to have confidence. And we will begin to have victory every moment, every day, every week, and every month that God allows us to be here. So as we enter into this time of invitation, where are you at? I've had to ask myself this same question this week. My hope is is that as we go into this time, that we can lay down those burdens. That we can lay down those fears. And that here in a few moments, when we walk out the sanctuary doors, we're going to know that we gave it all to God. Today, Will you be courageous enough to give it all to God? Stand with me as I pray. God, here in a few moments, we will be singing just as I am. I pray for each person in here that you meet them right where they are. 
the person sitting to their left or to their right or in front or behind are at a different stage in life. Each of us are. I pray that you would give us courage to lay down our burdens, to lay down our fears, those worries, anxieties, those things that we're dealing with. Help us to be courageous enough to know that our faith needs to replace our fear. That you are powerful enough to deal with our situations. And allow us, when you tell us we're to move, that we would walk in step with you. Not too fast, not too slow, but just at the right pace. Maybe there's someone here, oh God, who has not found freedom in Christ. I pray that you would touch their heart. Maybe there's someone here today who is seeking a church community of people who can love and support them in their life. I pray that you would touch their heart. Maybe one of our friends or our family members who is going through some pretty tough struggles right now. Is they're on our hearts. Help us to know how we can help them along the way. Just as we are, O oh Lord. Just as we are. Amen. Just as I am will be on the screen. It's also number 445 in your hymn book.
we have some wonderful, wonderful news. Becky comes forward this morning to transfer her letter from Olathe to be a, a member of our church. And then Janie comes forward to uh, reinstate her membership. Correct? All right. Just let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> and Johnny comes forward this morning asking for prayer. Uh, he has some things uh, that, that are going on within his life, and as a church community, it's our job to, to lift him up and to support him. Amen? Amen. So for Becky and for Janie, um, we're just going to do this the old-fashioned way, and this is the way that I prefer to do this. Um, I'm going to say an all in favor, and you're going to say hallelujah, <laughs> and then I'm going to go opposed. There is none. <laughs> okay? That's how I work this. So if you don't like it, put it on your comment card and give it to Pastor Janet. All right, for Becky, in terms of transferring membership, and for Janie, for reinstatement, um, if you are in favor as a church body, please say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And I don't have to worry about the next part because there is none. And so for Johnny, we are praying for you. I would like if you would stand with me in the back so we can shake your hand and let you know that we are here for you and the, the things that you're experiencing in your life. Okay? Amen. So in your bulletin, there's an insert. The family of God, this is going to be our congregational benediction. I'm going to ask that all of you please go through the back doors. If you want to go that way eventually, that's fine. But we're going to extend the right hand of Christian fellowship to say, to say welcome and, uh, and to say also we're praying for you. Amen? Amen. 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 One more time. That was loud. Eyes of God on the part of the family of God. I'm washed in the spirit. Then spray his blood. Joy days of Jesus as we travel this side. I've evolved in the fountain, the fountain of God. Have a All God's people said, Amen. Amen.